On the 22nd of March, 1989, Sheffield United Football Club celebrated its 100th birthday. Those 100 years have been packed with high drama, successes and failures. Many brilliant players, including 48 internationals, have worn the famous red and white shirt. United have played in six FA Cup finals, winning four of them, and the First Division Championship in 1898. United's first season comprised mainly friendly matches. A season in the Midland Counties League was followed by a season in the Northern League, where they finished third. In May 1892, United were elected to the newly formed second division of the Football League and finished as runners-up to Small Heath. By beating Accrington in a test match, or playoff, United won promotion to the first division at the first attempt. By this time, the club had signed Ernest Needham, usually known as Nudger, a diminutive player who was to become the key figure in United's major successes over the next few years. Less than five foot six tall, he won 16 caps for England, very versatile too, this so-called prince of halfbacks. In 1898, for example, in a period of only 10 days, he played left half for England, inside right for United, left half for the Football League, and left wing for United. By contrast, goalkeeper Bill Folk, who joined the club in 1894, was a giant of a man. He stood six foot two, at that time weighed a mere 12 stone five. A few years later, he tipped the scales at 22 stones. Bill was a born entertainer, a showman, and the crowds flocked to see him. He was strong enough to pick up and carry a man in each arm, and some of his kicks and throws were prodigious. But despite his tendency to act the clown, he was a great goalkeeper and played for England in 1897. Needham and Folk played in this great team, which won the First Division Championship in 1898 and the FA Cup in 1899, when they beat Derby County convincingly by four goals to one. In that team were other players who won international honours. Walter Bennett, George Headley, Harry Johnson, Tommy Moran, Fred Priest, Harry Thicket, and Peter Boyle. After losing to Spurs in the 1901 final, the same basic team won the cup again in 1902 when they beat Southampton 2-1 in a replay after a 1-1 draw. By this time, however, the team had been further strengthened by the arrival of Bernard Wilkinson, winger Bert Lipsham, and Alf Common, who was destined later to become the first £1,000 transfer player. Such was the quality of this outstanding squad that at one time in 1904, United had no fewer than 12 international players on their books, all at the same time. Further FA Cup success followed in 1915, when United beat Chelsea 3-0. By this time, a new generation of players had emerged and were continuing to uphold the high traditions and standards of their predecessors. Harold Goff in goal, Albert Sturgis, and Bob Evans were all capped for England. In fact, through a misunderstanding, Evans was capped for Wales as well. But the most influential player at Bramall Lane during this period was George Utley, who was transferred from nearby Barnsley for a reputed record fee of £2,000. He was a strong midfield player, a sound tactician and a real leader. The 1920s were dominated by Billy Gillespie, United's most capped player. The legendary Irishman played more than 500 games for United and won 25 caps, a high total in those days when international matches were restricted to the home countries. There are many nice stories about Billy, but the nicest one came at the end of his career. In 1932, Billy left United to become player-manager of Derry City Football Club in Northern Ireland. And as a tribute to him, the club changed their strip from black and white to the red and white stripes of Sheffield United. Having missed the 1915 Cup final, Gillespie did play in United's team that won the Cup in 1925 when they beat Cardiff 1-0. By this time, other players of international status had joined the club. Harold Pantling, George Green, David Mercer, and Fred Tunstall, who was reputed to strike the ball harder than any other player in the country. 
United did appear in one more cup final in 1936, when, as a second division team, they put on an impressive display against the mighty Arsenal before losing to this Ted Drake goal, which easily beat United goalkeeper Jack Smith. 1939 was another glory year, when, after five seasons in the second division, this team won promotion. Among the stars of that team were the cultured Jack Pickering, the colourful, robust Jock Dodds, who was transferred to Blackpool during the course of that season. And the emerging genius Jimmy Hagan, who was to become arguably the finest player ever to wear a United shirt. Intelligent, thoughtful, with immaculate ball control and tactical judgement, Hagan was to be the dominant figure for many years, the architect of many famous Sheffield United performances. With league football suspended during the war, the United could not take up their first division place until 1946. In the meantime, United suffered a tragic blow. The ground at Bramall Lane was bombed in December 1940, damaging the stand and reducing the number of seats at a time when there was already a shortage of seated accommodation. Building restrictions meant that there could be no improvement for many years, which resulted in a serious loss of income during the post-war football boom. This United team in 1948 includes many familiar faces in United's post-war history. In addition to that incomparable midfield general Hagen were Ernest Jackson, fullback and penalty king Fred Furness, and goal scorer Harold Brook. The 1950s saw a few changes, the most significant perhaps being the emergence of Joe Shaw, who went on to play for the club on 629 occasions over a period of 18 years. This is still United's individual appearance record and is unlikely ever to be beaten. Here we see Joe with the team that won the second division championship in 1953, which included not only Hagen and Brook, but also Alf Ringstead, capped 20 times by Ireland. And here is Joe Shaw with a later team, which reached the FA Cup semi-final in 1961, and which included such great players as Doc Pace, England goalkeeper Alan Hodgkinson, and England fullback Graham Shaw. With Joe Shaw's career spanning two decades, he saw many new arrivals. With him in this team are a young Len Badger, centre-forward Mick Jones, and his strike partner, Alan Birchinell. This picture shows Alan in 1966, cracking the ball past Manchester United goalkeeper Harry Gregg. Number six falling to the ground is Nobby Stiles, one of England's heroes in the World Cup final that year. And this Birchnell goal was even more satisfying for Unitedites. It was against the old enemy, Sheffield Wednesday, after Ron Springett had obligingly dropped the ball at Allen's feet. And so we move to the 1971 promotion team. Most supporters will recognise the players in this picture. Hodgkinson and Badger are still there, and their teammates included Jeff Sammons, Ted Hemsley, Bill Dearden, Eddie Colhoun, Gil Reese, Alan Woodward, and of course the colourful Tony Curry who gave Blades fans so many hours of pleasure with his skill and artistry. Here we see a goal scored by Colin Addison, another member of that successful team. But the main interest in this picture perhaps is the old cricket pavilion, with a whole cricket pitch separating it from the football pitch. Acres of open space that could always be put to good time-wasting use by teams defending a one-goal lead. What a sensational start this team made in the first division. Nine wins, including a cup victory over Fulham and two draws in their first 11 matches, saw United at the top of the league up to October. This following an undefeated run of 11 matches at the end of the promotion season gave them a total unbeaten run of 22 games. 1973 saw the start of work on the building of the new stand on Cherry Street. Unfortunately, it also heralded the start of an alarming decline on the field of play. United finished sixth in the first division in 1975. The new South Stand was completed in the same year. It came as a shock and bitter blow when relegation came in 1976. Even the arrival of the magical Alex Sabella could not stop the slide. Relegation to the third division in 1979. Then in 1981, the unbelievable happened. A last-minute penalty miss in the last game of the season sent United tumbling into the fourth division. 
This team won back some of United's lost pride by winning the 4th Division Championship in 1982. The highlights been the creative talents of Colin Morris and the goal-scoring skills of Bob Hatton and the prolific Keith Edwards. The climax of an unforgettable season was the final game at Darlington where the delighted fans created a carnival atmosphere as United clinched the championship. The supporters were able to celebrate again in 1984 when, after a nail-biting finish to the season, this team put United once again in the second division. Glossing quickly over the events of United's 99th year, we move on to the players who won promotion in United's centenary year. Tony Agarna, Andy Barnsley, Graham Benstead, Bob Booker, Ian Bryson, Darren Carr, Brian Dean, Martin Dickinson, Chris Downs, Peter Duffield, John Francis, John Gannon, Francis Joseph, John Moore, Martin Pike, Cliff Powell, Alan Roberts, Vaughan Ryan, Brian Smith, Paul Stancliffe, Steve Thompson, Mark Todd, Simon Tracy, Simon Webster, Dane Whitehouse, Chris Wilder, Paul Williams. We salute all those who have contributed throughout a hundred years to the colourful and distinguished story of Sheffield United Football Club. And so to the events of the centenary season, and there's no doubting the joy for the players, management, staff, supporters, and everyone connected with Sheffield United that the club got promotion in the centenary season. That pleasure felt no more than by club captain Paul Stancliffe, captaining his home side to promotion in the centenary year. Well, obviously it's a great thrill when you're a schoolboy and you look to your ambitions as a football, you always want to play for your hometown, I think. And uh, to come here was a great thrill for me. And then finally to be captain and leading to promotion was uh, really a dream come true. How special was it getting promotion in the centenary year? I think it meant a lot to the club and to the fans. I mean, obviously, you know, things like this only come, well, once every hundred years. And uh, everybody's sort of looking forward to it. It was a big disappointment to come down. And everybody thought that if we could get back in that year, it'd be a, you know, it'd be a good party time. Well, it meant a lot in some ways, because when I joined the club, we got relegated, unfortunately, and obviously that wasn't a good taste for me or for the club. And obviously it being a centenary year, it made it all the more important for everybody. So getting back to the second division and actually gaining promotion in the centenary was a bonus and a tremendous achievement. Which particular players would you pick out for, for special praise? Well, they all did well in various circumstances. I mean, Graham Benz did come in and did tremendously well through the season and saved us on several occasions with important saves. Chrissy Wilder started and then lost his place through injury, and Brian Smith got in and did a tremendous job. He lost his place through injury. We had Simon Webster, who started the season off in tremendous form and did brilliantly, and again broke his leg. And then, of course, we had Tony and Brian up front, who knocked in 60 goals between them. Again, great achievements. But then we mustn't overlook Peter Duffield, Alan Robertson, Ian Bryson, who weighed him with sort of like 25 goals between them so everybody all did a good job in, at vital times for us it's hard to pick sort of individuals out i mean you always look towards as a team but obviously individuals do shine uh, for me I, th I thought without a doubt the best player we had this season was tony agana i thought he was very sharp all season very strong and worried defenders a lot brian dean up front with him they, they played well together so what was it that made the partnership so successful him <laughs> him <laughs> No, um, we, we had a good side, all in all. Uh, we created a lot of chances, so you're always going to score. But, you know, we're creating a lot. Which particular games did you enjoy most? Um, 
the Norwich game, you know, gives a lot of pleasure, the whole team, the fans as well. Um, I think when we played the top sides like Wolves and Port Vale, you know, they attracted a lot of attention and, you know, they were quite enjoyable to play. Well, I think myself, I enjoyed the Wolves game away, the game that finally took us up. Um, it was sort of quite nail-biting at the end of the season and, you know, that was a great one to play in. I suppose really it'd have to be the Wolves game, which really more or less clings, clings promotion. You got on the score sheet a few times yourself as a defender this, this year. Which particular goals stand out? I think I have to say the Wolves won again. They've been such an important game. We were 1-0 down at the time, we only needed a point for promotion. And then I went up for a corner and got an header in off Alan Roberts' corner. So that meant a great deal. It was mainly after the Wolves game that I felt that uh, it was a great occasion that we'd actually made it and that obviously it wasn't impossible that Port Vale couldn't get up but we had to sort of lose by 11 goals or lose by 6 and they had to do 5 so that was a great feeling. The Bristol game was really somewhat of an anti-climax. What do you think were the, the key factors in the success over the season? Well, I think the players' application to what we tried to set out to do from the word go back in the early pre-season, and they started off tremendously well, and they came through a little dip at Christmas and then another little dip at Easter and showed their character and commitment to the cause. It's all about creating chances. You know, we, we stuck them away. Um, if you looked at the 60 goals, probably 10 were individual goals, yeah. and the other 50 came about by... You know, team great play. teamwork, yeah. uh, great wing play, great midfield play, you know, That's out right. from the defence, out from the keeper, through, through to everybody, really. Yeah. Which particular players, other players in the team, would you pay particular credit to? I don't think you can pick um, single players out. I don't think they want to be picked out. Yeah. But, um, you know, we just, we're just playing very well going forward. You know, there are times when myself and Brian weren't scoring, we had to shore it up at the back, and, and we've done well there again. It was a great season all round, team-wise. I think the low points was uh, when we were missing out on points here in Bramall Lane. We weren't playing particularly well and we weren't getting the points. Not winning the league, um, perhaps we were in a great position to win it um, at, at certain times of the season. The Norwich game was, was quite disappointing for me, although it was, you know, the fans were home happy, you know, that we'd put up a, a good show against the uh, top of the first division. Um, I, I thought we could have at least got a draw, but, you know, it, it all fades into insignificance. You've got to look, look ahead, really, not back. Any disappointments over the season? No, that, well, other than that we didn't come first and we didn't get to Wembley in both the Cups. How much did the supporters help the players of Sheffield United through the season to, to gain promotion? Um, obviously, the supporters play a big part in any club. Uh, here at Sheffield, we've got a, a lot of supporters. We've got a good range of them. As I said earlier, in that lean spell at Bramall Lane, they did start to get a little bit jittery. And I think that affected the players really more than sort of the, the chance to get on top and push us through the games. Uh, one or two of the new players that come felt it, especially, you know, when the, the fans started booing and things like that. I know it's hard for them. It's hard for the players. We don't mean particularly to play bad. But uh, once, once they get behind us, they can be a great help. And they were a terrific help at a, to a lot of away games we went to where they really got behind and helped the players. Well, that obviously helps. Um, it's a big club and they expect a lot from their teams. But, um, you know, they gave us every chance to produce and uh, obviously that helps. Well, I think always supporters help, and particularly when they're behind the team and they give vocal support. It's easy to criticise and, and moan at players or the team when it's not doing well. That's easy. What we've really got to do is, when things are not going well, is bring the team out of that doldrums. And obviously it was great to go to places like Mansfield, Chester and Bury and, you know, come out and see loads of Blades fans there cheering and singing, which is a tremendous for the club. And obviously the players felt great about that, and I certainly felt proud sitting in the stand watching them. The first hundred years of history for Sheffield United finished with promotion. Can the second hundred start with promotion? That would be very nice, wouldn't it? I mean, it's going to be a difficult new team in the division. There's a lot of odd teams as well. You, know, you look at the teams that's come down, Newcastle, West Ham. But, uh, you know, there's 20-odd teams in that division at the moment, very ambitious. They're all thinking the same thing. We can only give it as best shot. And if we can get as many chances as last season, we should... In theory, score as many, if not more, goals. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's going to be harder um, moving up at the division, but, um, you know, there again, if the team works hard, you know, I don't see why we can't do well. I mean, we're all committed to the cause, really. 
What we'll be trying our dandest, we'll be trying to get up there, and if we can get in the first division, that's what we'll be trying to achieve. We all obviously always work out to get, end up as high as possible in the league and be as successful in all the cup competitions. And you're still enjoying yourself in Sheffield? Yeah, it's great. I've settled. Uh, still haven't quite got the accent right, but uh, that might take a year or two. During the promotion season, United amassed 120 goals in league and cup games, 116 scored by the Blades with four own goals. Unfortunately, unlike United, not every club video their home games. However, we've managed to find 100 scored by the Blades during the centenary season. to a Ghana. And he's there. She's very, very quick. Now a Ghana. And there it is. Nice Francis. To a Ghana.
Over goes the corner, it's flicked on again towards Brian Dean, who puts the header back in. Agane couldn't quite get to the ball as it fell. Dean's cross goes over. Superb goal there for Sheffield United. No real direction in that. And Sheffield United break it on the far side. Going across over towards Tony Agana, who's turning now. And Sheffield United take the lead to Simon Webster. Now Roberts. And mistake there by Roberts. Now what can Whitehall do? It's there, yeah. Three against four as McNabb tries to tackle Roberts unsuccessfully. Still Roberts. Feeds the ball out to Argana. Room for the cross. Dean is in the middle. A snapshot came in from Todd. And into the internet. Roberts back to Wilder. The field. Agana, the field again, round the keeper. to Chris Hutchins, Chris Wilder, still near Garner in the box, and still near Garner scores, 86 was we got a free kick and uh, it got launched to the edge of the box um, I flicked it on but the defender beat me and uh, Peter Duffield just I don't know how he did it he just turned with his back to goal and swung a lovely ball to the edge of the box and I managed to chest it down wrong foot in the defender and it bounced up nicely and I caught it on the half volley straight into the bottom of the net from my 
Martin Pike. Good first time cross from Roberts. There's a goal there by Bryson. Roberts. to Bryson. Can he get the better of Stanley? Need one and it is! Brian Dean again for Sheffield United! Francis, what can Francis do? He makes it 1-1! One, one. Picks out Bryson nicely. Now Duffield. Now Pike. And is it there? Yes! I think the, the goal that away to Huddersfield in the FA Cup is my favourite. Um, always close games up there. I think uh, Mark Todd helped it into the corner. Um, I'd run into the channel, uh, controlled it, turned and hit it, you know, in my movement and uh, flew into the top corner. Kick from Kite. Now oh, Bryson. 
Good deep cross in, finds Booker. And it's a good goal from Booker! United's third corner. Cleaped on by Booker. Still not cleared away. And he's there! Todd makes the score! Sheffield United 1, Colchester United 2. Now, good ball from Garner to Bryson. Finds Dean, it's Joe! It's a goal! Duffield! Yes, it is! It's there! Duffield. Nagana, can he use his speed? He does! But he does! He should all be United! So, Peter Duffield for the task of making it Sheffield United 3, Bolton Wanderers 0. Duffield's chance to score his second goal and I wonder if he's going to put it in the same place as he did last time. He does. Burgess, now Pike, highest baller today, Morgan, knee work by Morgan, very good challenge from Booker, force to Todd, Garner, good tackle from Bob Booker, and Duffield on side, he's got Bryson on his far side, can he make it three? He does! Good and all credit to Blackpool, they've set the stall out in this second half to make amends for that rather disastrous first, but that's a good ball from Francis to Duffield. And it's there, yes, and it's Gannon!
to a garner. Side track this time, and it's four against three. Agana, Dean, yes! <laughs> Given away to Bryson. On the overlap nicely is Pike. Can he get his crossing? He does. It's here, yes! Garner. Now Jemson. The field. minutes gone and still Sheffield United won and that's a poor one and it's a Garner can he chip him he does he's 2-0 for United now Dean can United make it three It's a good cross to this far side, and that's a goal. Oh, it's a good header, and it was from the minute that back header took place, it was always going to be a goal. United not messing around, waiting for these free kicks. But that wasn't a very, very good one from Pike. Dean Agana. Yes, he's there! Tony Agana makes it one all. Sheffield United with the long throw in on the 
near side, back-headed away by Skinner. In for Agana, that header is off target. It will stay in play. Back by Dean, and Agana's there. And United have equalised. But Rugby again gets the better of Brian Dean. That's nice trick move. Roberts swings a crossover, Bryson at the back post and it's got in. There it is, the equaliser. Svedeen. Quickly taken. A garner, little back flick. In it comes the header, it's there. Away from Bellamy. Gooding. Long ball forward. Stancliffe is there. Pike forward. A garner. Gets the shot in. And that point at Wolves secured promotion to the second division. A great end to the centenary season. The likes of Gillespie, Hagen, Brook and Pace played their football when matches were very rarely filmed, never mind videoed. But from our recent past, we can see again the great finishing from dead balls and free play of Mark Dempsey. And it's a goal, yes! What a good goal there by Dempsey. Oh, with Morris. Nice Dempsey, and it's a good goal by Dempsey! The ever entertaining and popular Peter Beagree. Good chest down there by Peter with. And finding Frayne, through the legs to Morris. Good cross from Morris, and a good goal from Beagree! What a good move by United! Quick on from Beagree. Now, can Wigley get his crossing? He does this time. Force for with. With screws him back. Could it be a goal? It's a goal! Yes, United! Into doors. Back to Barnsley. The great Colin Morris. By David Frame. And now Fall is away again. Forward for Morris. And he's done the show. A good move there. And that prolific goal scorer, Keith Edwards.
end our look back at the history of Sheffield United, with thanks to the BBC, we can turn the clock back even further. Here's John Motson. Curry. Woodward. And Carlton on the near post. Curry, yes! Sheffield United have equalised within two minutes and Curry got the final touch. Woodward, who was waiting on the far side of the area to meet that cross, Kamak going in against the post, the ball running free, and West Ham appealing for offside against Curry, but the goal stands. Here's uh, Harwood. Sabella. Oh, a good run by Anderson on this side. Look at that. That's beautifully done by Anderson. And that is a quite superb goal. Peter Anderson's second goal of the match. A lovely break from defence by Sheffield United. And when Anderson made the run, it was a good run in the first place, but the way he took the ball back the other side of the defender and then finished it off so clinically was lovely to watch. These clearances from Nicky Johns not sometimes giving his colleagues every chance. But here's a chance for Hansen, and he takes it well. Players coming forward in the centre. Anderson's made a good run. Anderson is there! And the ball now with Gould. As Curry was in the way. And Woodward kept it in and found Curry. Field and Kamak to the left. Still Curry. What about that? A quality goal by a quality player. His second of the match, and they don't come any better. He sized up the situation, he looked left and right. He went on, found the space for the shot, and placed it so sweetly. Past Day, who could do nothing about it.